Welcome to this Warriors of Future breakdown, ending explained, and review. I had no idea that this movie existed, but the CGI, set design, and futuristic suits looked stunning. It's no surprise that it does look as good as it does, and better than any futuristic war movie from Hollywood, as a VFX artist was directing it. VFX artists taking over directorial duties can be hit and miss, but this, in my opinion, is a real hidden gem. While the demise of Netflix has been applauded and they've cancelled everything, I'm still not over Archive 81, their international catalogue is stacked with stuff I would never have even thought to check out. The movie is set in 2055, when the planet has been destroyed due to pollution combined with military robots. The world's just in a general disrepair, and birth defects and a low risk of surviving infancy is prevalent. To protect society, the gigantic sky domes known as skynets were built and they were focusing on building these to fix society. And we focus mainly on the sky dome and over B-16. However, during construction, a gigantic meteor landed and destroyed the area. As if the future couldn't get any worse, it has brought with it a bizarre alien plant dubbed Pandora. However, there's a light on the horizon as it does purify the air. The Earth can finally be saved except the rains and its growth would threaten the survival of people near the plant and survival is a real problem here. Luckily, a Dr. Chan has able to work out a solution. The doctor works out a way to deliver a rare virus to the plant that would neutralize the harmful effects while keeping the benefits of repairing the air of the earth, meaning that we do not need these sky nets anymore. Tyler and Johnson are the ones sent to deliver this gene bullet to the pistol of the plant and save humanity. We also have Skunk join the team who is a former ASU soldier. He disagreed with soldiers being sent on suicide missions, which we saw in a flashback, and thinks that the loss of life for suicide missions just isn't a good idea. This led to him being dismissed when he let his brothers in arms in the lurch and became distant from his former soldier friends. Meanwhile, there is a backup plan to bomb the plant. However, while the bomb will kill the plants, it would also kill 160 odd thousand people and sabotage starts to occur as the battle group go in but are attacked. Now, one of the robots does appear to blow up the ship, creating a Black Hawk Down style situation where there's only like a few survivors are left to carry out the mission, which is a very big trope in these sort of movies. It wasn't just a piece of weird technical glitch. It wasn't the robot itself by accident throwing a grenade, but Sean Lee, the commander of B-16 and the Skynet project, was behind it assuming direct control. He hates the idea of Skynets being used or not being used as the government has spent far too much money making them. And imagine that he also likes the control that they have on humanity being under a dome. He wants to keep them and make sure that the plant is destroyed so no one can use it to try and fix society. Tyler has a specific interest in fixing the sins of the past and the pollution as his daughter died due to this pollution and he is reminded of this when he rescues an orphan girl which creates some tension in the latter half of the movie. He along with his former best friend who was called back into action like I said for the mission search for the vial to neutralize the plant and they're attacked and also they need to prove that their mission was sabotaged as there is a bomb waiting to go which is dubbed plan b they need to get to the orca which was one of the ships sent to take part in the mission but are attacked by both the plant monsters and also the robots they contact lee explaining that they have proof of what happened not taking this he sends out more and more robots to attack them as they're in armored cars trying to get to fix everything and well he wants to enact or make sure that plan b can be enacted so that they destroy the plant and this skynet construction will continue however in a dramatic and action-packed final third the soldiers managed to make it to the pistol and cheng managed to execute the gene bomb 
and so the planet can slowly be cleansed. So Lee tops himself instead of being arrested, and all is well for everyone, as the atmosphere is improving and everyone can go about their day, the watch can be fixed, the armoured car is being worked on, and Cheng accepts a mission to go to the moon, which we see him do in just some absolutely amazing piece of CGI, and made me hope that we get a moon mission on Cyberpunk 2077, the game, at some point. Overall, I loved this movie. It was absolutely action-packed, had some amazing set pieces and CGI. At an hour and 40 minutes, it did not outstay its welcome. It knew exactly what it wanted to do, was fun, succinct, and had a great message about fixing the pollution in our world. The standout for me was the suits that the soldiers were wearing, which reminded me of something like from the Callisto Protocol or other futuristic space games. But that is it for this video. Let me know what you think down below. Do subscribe with notifications on, and I'll see you soon, and goodbye.